In the mechanics of materials, the strength of the material refers to the ability of the material to resist an externally applied force without breaking or yielding. That is the ability of a material to withstand an applied load without failure. The strength of a material is evaluated based on the amount of load it can take before fracturing. There are different types of material strength. They are compressive strength, tensile strength, shear strength, fatigue strength, bending or flexural strength, torsional strength, etc. Compressive strength. Compressive strength is the ability of a material or structural elements to withstand loads that reduce the size of the material when applied. It can also be defined as the maximum compression load a body can bear before failure divided by its cross-sectional area. Materials such as concrete and rocks are often evaluated using a compression strength test. It is a crucial parameter in construction engineering because it determines whether a material is suitable for a given application. How is compressive strength tested? A small sample of concrete mix is first cast and allowed to cure or age for 28 days. If the concrete sample contains additional material, a longer curing time is recommended. The concrete test specimen usually in the form of a cube or cylinder, is compressed between the plate and of a compression testing machine by a gradually applied load. The result of the compressive strength is calculated by the force applied to the specimen divided by its cross-sectional area. Where force is expressed in Newton, and the area is expressed in meter square, the resulting unit of compressive strength is Pascal. Factors such as mix proportion, the water-cement ratio, and curing conditions all affect the compressive strength of the concrete. Tensile strength. The tensile strength can be defined as the maximum stress that a material with a particular cross-section area can bear before breaking when it is allowed to be stretched or pulled. It is a measure of a material's ability to resist deformation under tension or stretching forces. It is the point when a material goes from elastic to plastic deformation. In elastic deformation, the material returns to its original dimension. The deformation is reversible and non-permanent, while plastic deformation, the material does not return to its original dimension. The process is permanent and irreversible. Some materials exhibit an abrupt failure when the tensile capacity is reached, while others show deformation or necking before completely breaking apart. Tensile strength is a critical factor in designing structures such as bridges, buildings, and aircraft. It is important in the design of products that are subject to pulling or stretching forces such as ropes, cables, and wires. Tensile strength is determined by conducting a tensile test using a universal testing machine, which holds the specimen material in place and applies the tension stress needed to check the breaking point. The equipment is connected to an extensometer which measures changes in the specimen's length. The specimen used for tensile testing is shaped into an around bar with a large shoulder on both ends, from which the testing machine can hold the specimen during the application of the stress. As the machine pulls the specimen, the change in gauge length is measured and a stress strain curve is plotted. From the stress strain curve the yield strength which is defined as the maximum amount of stress a material can withstand before showing plastic deformation is determined. In summary, the stress strain curve shows that the material first deforms elastically. When you release the stress it returns to its original shape. With more force applied they deform plastically, this is the yield point. When you release the stress they have permanently been stretched to a new shape. Finally, it breaks which is the ultimate tensile stress or breaking point. The tensile strength can be affected by various factors such as temperature, strain rate, and fatigue. Tensile strength is measured in Pascal or other pressure unit. Shear strength. Shear strength is the ability of a material or component to resist shear forces without failing. That is, it is the maximum shear force that can be accommodated before failing. Shear is a type of force that causes material internal structure to slide against itself. It can cause a structural member to split vertically or diagonally. Therefore, the shear strength of a material can be measured in either the vertical or horizontal direction. In structural and mechanical engineering, shear strength is one of the major considerations in designing many components and parts such as beams, columns, fasteners, etc. In soil mechanics, the shear strength of the soil is the shear force that the soil can withstand. 
The shear strength is crucial for understanding the stability of slope foundations and retaining walls. The shear strength of the soil is dependent on factors such as friction between particles and the degree of interlock between them. The shear strength of a material is typically determined through laboratory testing such as direct shear test, triaxial shear test, vein shear test, borehole shear test, etc. The shear strength is often described by two parameters, cohesion and friction angle. Cohesion is the non-frictional part of resistance which is independent of the normal stress, while friction angle is the angle measured between the normal force and resultant force that is attained when failure just occurs in response to a shearing stress. These parameters are used in various engineering analyses to predict the behavior of material under different loading conditions. Fatigue strength. Fatigue strength is defined as the amplitude of cyclic stress that can be applied to a material without causing fatigue failure. American Society for Testing and Materials defines it as the value of stress at which failure occurs after several load cycles. Fatigue life characterizes a material fatigue behavior. It is the number of cycles to cause failure at a specified stress level. Fatigue life is affected by cyclic stresses, residual stresses, material properties, internal defects, grain size, temperature, surface quality, oxidation, corrosion and design geometry, etc. Fatigue is a dynamic phenomenon that initiates small cracks in the material or components due to cyclic or fluctuating stress and causes them to grow into large cracks. These cracks if not detected can lead to catastrophic failure. The process of fatigue failure is characterized by three distinct steps. 1. Crack initiation, in which a small crack forms at some point of high stress concentration. 2. Crack propagation, this crack advances incrementally with each stress cycle. Most of the fatigue life is generally consumed in the crack growth phase. 3. Ultimate failure, which occurs very rapidly once the advancing crack has reached a critical size. There are two basic testing procedures used to study fatigue. 1. The rotary bending test. 2. The deflection bending test. SN Fatigue Co. Engineers use several methods to determine the fatigue life of a material. One of the most useful is the stress life method commonly characterized by the SN curve also known as Waller curves. It is a graph that plots the constant cyclic stress of amplitude, S, applied to a material specimen against the number of loading cycles, n, the specimen can withstand before eventually failing. Fatigue strength is often used interchangeably with fatigue limit. The fatigue limit, sometimes called the endurance limit, is the stress level below which an infinite number of loading cycles can be applied to a material without causing fatigue failure. Increasing the degree of surface finishing, e.g. using polishing instead of grinding, and increasing the hardness of the surface layer of metal components will improve fatigue life. Flexural or bending test. Flexural strength, also known as modulus of rupture, or bend strength, is a material property that describes the ability of a material to resist deformation under bending. It is a measure of the maximum stress a material can withstand before it bends or breaks when subjected to a bending force or moment. It comprises both compression and tension. At the inside of the bend, the stress will be at its maximum compressive stress value, while at the outer side, the stress will be at its maximum tensile stress value. The inner and outer edges of the specimen are called extreme fibers. Understanding the flexural strength of a material is crucial in engineering and material selection processes, as it helps determine the material's suitability for a specific application where bending or flexing forces are important such as as unreinforced concrete slabs, beams, etc. Flexural strength is typically determined through a standard test called the three-point bending test, where a sample is supported at two points and a load is applied at the center to induce bending. The flexural strength test on concrete can be conducted using either third-point bending test, ASTM C78, or center-point bending test, ASTM C293. The flexural strength is expressed as the modulus of rupture in psi. Torsional strength. Torsional strength measures the ability of a material to withstand a twisting load. It is the ultimate strength of a material subjected to torsional force. That is the maximum torsional stress that a material can sustain before rupture. 
Torsion is defined as the twisting of an object due to torque applied to it. Mathematically, it is given as torsional strength equals rotational force divided by the cross-sectional area. It is practically important in applications where components are subjected to torsional loading such as shafts, gears, and other rotating machinery parts.